Hello again guys and welcome to another screencast and this particular screencast we are going to be discussing biomechanical principles, so basic principles such as Newton's laws and basic calculations. Biomechanics is the study of human movement and the effect of forces that affect sporting performance. So as an overview that's what we are discussing in this part of the OCR A-Level PE course. And by using biomechanics, it enables us to do particular things in sport to advance performance. First of all, biomechanical principles allows us to effectively analyze someone's performance to great detail. And by analysing that performance, we can maximise movement efficiency for things like skills or technique of running, for example, as well as object movement efficiency, so things like bikes and Formula One cars. By analysing performance, specifically using biomechanical principles, we can reduce and help prevent injuries occurring to athletes through sport. We can also modify and create equipment using biomechanical principles, which will mean performance is much more effective. So for example, the design of Formula One cars has rapidly changed throughout the years, and that's mainly been promoted through use of sports science and biomechanical principles to help increase speed of cars as well as safety of cars. This screencast will start off by discussing what we call Newton's laws because this underpins most things in the biomechanics unit. And once you have an understanding of Newton's laws, you can then apply it to lots of different things in sport. Newton's laws will help us understand why a body, that is a person or an object, that's what we mean by body, why a body will move or why it won't. It's really useful for training, for analysing body composition and also to help correct technique in sport. Newton's laws relate to three specific areas that us in the sports science area or A-level PE area are particularly interested in that could be useful for sports analysis. And these laws are as follows, the law of inertia, the law of acceleration, and the law of reaction. For each particular law, I'd like you to write down the law, so I'm going to put it in quotes, and then we're going to just use a slide to use a 100 meter sprinter to explain what we mean in terms of how the laws can be applied. And this is something that the exam questions might ask you. It might not necessarily be the 100 meter sprinter, it might be something else but they will ask you to apply these laws to an object or a body. Okay, so here is the first law of inertia. A body continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity, so the same speed, unless acted upon by another force. And just to be clear, again, a body refers to an athlete or an object. That's what we're looking at. So if we look at that law in a bit more detail, all bodies, regardless of the shape or size of the body, will have a mass that gravity will bring to the ground. So think about Newton's laws, he invented this idea of gravity. The body will be brought to the ground somehow. And therefore inertia just means how resistant is that body, so the object or the person, to changing the way it moves, its state of motion. The bigger the mass of a body, the harder it will be to change its state of motion or to move it. And therefore you need more force to move that body. But essentially what we're talking about is the resistance of a body to motion. So, if we look at a 100 metre sprinter as seen in the picture, 
as the athlete is stationary in the blocks before the starting gun goes off, this is a good example of inertia. The athlete's body is stationary, it's not moving, and therefore it doesn't move until another force is acted upon it. For example, the athlete would then push against the blocks, which is another force. Okay, So the athlete remains stationary in the blocks until another force is acted upon it. That's a good example of inertia. If you want to think of it another way, if you think of a tennis ball in your hand, if you put it flat in the palm of your hand, the ball will not move until you apply a force to the ball. That's another example of inertia. The second law, acceleration, is whereby a body's rate of change in momentum is proportional to the size of the force applied, and it always acts in the same direction as the force applied. Again, remembering a body is an athlete or an object. So we'll write that quote down first, and then we'll use it. So using that quote, what we're trying to get at with acceleration is how fast an object moves is just proportional to the size of the force that's pushing it. So the size of the force that's being applied. The amount of motion that happens to the body is called momentum. So you've heard of, of bodies or objects gaining momentum. So it's gaining motion, it's gaining movement. And this directly relates to the law of acceleration. So more and more force is being applied, the object is gaining momentum, it's getting faster. Again, going back to what we said before, remember, the larger the mass of the body, so the heavier the person or the heavier the object, the greater the force we need to move it or to accelerate it. Now, if we apply this to our 100 meter sprint, so remember, inertia, when they're stationary in the blocks, no force is acting upon them. Acceleration, slightly different. We've pushed a force against the athlete. And so the athlete, as the athlete accelerates out of the blocks, the athlete will accelerate in the same direction and with the same force that's applied to the athlete. So that's my example of acceleration. Very important that you write about the, the direction of the force and the amount of the force. So that athlete will move as fast as the force that is applied and in the same direction that the force is applied. Hence why they travel forward quite quickly. The third law is called reaction and simply this is for every action force applied to a body there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Again body meaning athlete or object which we've discussed a few times now. If we put this into application you're just thinking of an equal and opposite force generated by where the body is in contact with something else. So for example, for a 100 meter sprinter, as the athlete pushes into the block, the force they push into the block with their feet or using their rectus femoris or bicep femoris or gluteus maximus is pushed back by the block itself. So the block gives back an equal and opposite reactionary force, which helps accelerate the athlete forwards. So they're pushing their foot into the ground. The ground gives off a force which pushes us forwards. All right, so that is the law of reaction. So I've gone through nicely there, the 100 meter sprinter and the three different laws, and you can easily see how these are being applied. Let's think about this then. So if we look at the picture, we're just gonna look at the ball 
in a rugby conversion. Now, for those that are not familiar with this, a ball in a rugby conversion might be placed on a tee to start with before the ball is kicked. So that's what I want you to think about in your mind. And what you'll need to do on a piece of paper is explain how the three laws apply to that rugby ball before, after, and during it's being kicked. So you're applying the laws of inertia, acceleration, and reaction in any way you can think of through the rugby conversion kick. So you can do that in your own time. So those are the basic laws that we need to use for biomechanical principles given to us by Newton. And they are the three laws that are going to be asked of you by the exam questions applying to different situations. Biomechanics also requires some form of calculations and you can be tested on any of these different calculations throughout the exam and it may be they want you to apply to a certain situation with the exam. All we're going to do now for the final bit of this screencast is show you the calculations so you can note them down. You've got a basic understanding of these and as a staff member or your own staff member may then ask you to do certain calculations in relation to these so you can practice them. The calculations we require for our exam are as follows. Velocity, momentum, acceleration and force. So again with each slide I will give you the calculation, note it down, make sure you're happy with it and then staff members may discuss some calculation practice for you. Alright, so let's start with velocity. Velocity is the rate of change in displacement. Displacement meaning how far they're traveling from A to B. So the calculation we need is as follows. Velocity equals displacement divided by time taken. Displacement, seen in blue there, is measured in meters. You will only get marks for doing these calculations if you give the correct units of measurement. So please make sure you're writing down not only displacement but that displacement is measured in meters. Very important. Time taken obviously is measured in seconds and therefore velocity is a combination of those two things. Velocity is measured in meters from the displacement per second from the time. So meters per second, and we write that m slash s. The second calculation is momentum. Momentum refers to the quality of movement or motion possessed by a moving body. Remember the athlete or an object. And again, if we want to calculate this, there is a simple equation. Momentum equals mass multiplied by velocity. Mass is measured in kilograms, although it says meters there, but ignore that. It's measured in kilograms. Velocity is measured in meters per second, because we've just met that from our last slide. So logically, momentum is therefore measured in kilogram meters per second, or kgm slash s. The third calculation we will require is acceleration. And acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. So how fast is something moving? And for this, a slightly more complex calculation that you'll need to remember. If we want to find acceleration in red, first of all, we need to do a simple sum to begin with, which is final velocity, and we've met velocity already, minus initial velocity. So the end speed minus the start speed, final versus initial. And that long line in the middle here means divided by. So once we've found final velocity minus initial velocity, we're going to divide that by the time it's taken for the object or body to move. 
Again, time is measured in seconds. Once you've worked out the final velocity minus initial velocity, that is then measured in meters per second, so m slash s. And therefore, acceleration in red is measured in a combination of these two things, which is meters per second per second. m slash s slash s. The final calculation is force. Force is a push or a pull that changes the movement or motion of a body. And it is put as simply as force equals mass times or multiplied by acceleration. And as per usual, mass is measured in kilograms. Acceleration is measured in meters per second per second, because we've just met that on the previous slide. Force itself is measured in newtons. Hopefully, that will give you a basic understanding of some of the calculations that you will require for the biomechanical principles areas, as well as a good understanding of Newton's laws in a basic format and that you can apply it to a practical situation. Thanks for watching this screencast. Again, if you need any more help with OCRA level PE or any other biomechanical principles, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube for more help.